Hello and welcome to part one of this Frogger SFML object oriented programming example. I'm going to be using Frogger as an example, but it's going to be a very simple version of Frogger. It's less about creating Frogger and more about how to create object oriented code. In this actual first video, what we're going to do is create a very simple Frogger example, but we're going to put it all inside of one single source file, which happens to be named main.cpp. So just the one file is going to contain all the code. And from there, we are going to work on abstracting that out into separate classes and then using some other really cool techniques for some more abstraction. And again, it doesn't matter whether you using SFML or not because the principles that we will cover in this series will be relevant for Frogger or any other game, SFML or any other framework, 2D or 3D, even C++ or any other language because the principles will be essentially the same as long as you know the syntax. So first of all, I've got a template already created for SFML. So just make sure you've already got a SFML template already working. If you haven't, feel free. We have videos covering that as well for setting up on stuff like Mac and Windows. Though I'm doing it on a Mac, the process is essentially the same. As long as you know how to use Visual Studio and create files, the coding will not change at all. Or, okay, so let's get down to it. The first thing that we're going to create is the frog. So I'm going, to, I'm going to use rectangle shapes, but the process is essentially the same. If you're using sprites, you would just obviously need to load images into a texture. We have separate videos in a separate SFML tutorial series covering the basics of SFML in general. So feel free to check that out. And I'm going to call this frog. And I'm gonna set some properties for the frog. So frog dot set size. This is just going to be 80 by 80, for example. Oh, my bad, this needs to be a, a 0 0.0f and 0 0.0f. Oh, what's it moaning about? Too many arg, ah, this takes a SFVec 2f fantastic start to this tutorial vector 2f and if i enclose all of this in brackets and there we go no errors now so frog dot set position and for the set position we could either use a vector or two float values well you just be pretty consistent pretty consistent you'll probably i'll probably end up using something else somewhere down the line in this series. So this is going to be a SF vector 2F. And in here for the position, what we're going to do is position it at the bottom, centered in the X axis. So I think before we start putting the code in here, we need to think about how we're going to split our screen up. Because the conventional Frogger game, if I open up Frogger, so Frogger online, and I go to the first link on here. So let this load up. So as you can see, I can move left and right, but the movement isn't actually smooth. It jumps from one place to another. And that's the same in the Y axis. Just look how good I am. Oh yeah. Oh damn it. Oh, I, I hit the wrong part. Oh, not my fault. Okay, ignoring my mistake, the movement is in a blocky fashion. So I go from one grid space to the next. So this screen is evenly split up into grid spaces or like this window is. That's essentially what we want to do. So we've got a screen of 640 by 480. If you have a different screen resolution size, you can find, figure out some other sort of grid system. But I'm going to split it up into 80 by 80 pixel sizes. So there'll be eight spaces in the X axis and there will be six spaces in the Y axis. So for the position, what we're gonna do, because we want it centered in the X axis, do, 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 frog. Actually, for now, we're just gonna have it in the bottom left. I will actually leave that as an extra task for you because that's generally the way it would work. You would have it centered in the x-axis, 
but I'm just gonna have it on the bottom in general. So I'm gonna get the position of the frog, set it to the X value that we have at the moment, which just happens to be zero. And now we're gonna set the Y value, which is going to be the right at the bottom. So we're gonna do window dot get size, and this will return a Y value, which is the height. And we are going to take away the frog dot get size y value. So we're taking away the frog height. The reason we're doing that is remember the origin in SFML by default is the top left. So when we move stuff, it's relative to the origin. So if we move it all the way down, it will actually be off screen because it's the origin that will be at the bottom of the screen. So the rest of the sprite will be off screen. So we just need to move it up by the frog height. So now before we create anything else, let's draw it so let's just do window dot draw and in here we're going to put frog let's run this see what we get there we go we have our amazing frog so now let's just quit out of this what we're going to do now is handle events for moving our frog so I've already got an event system set up here. Again, we got separate videos covering how to use this and what exactly this is. So in here, I'm gonna add a case for SF event key released. Gonna break. And in here, we're just gonna check if the key being released is the key if it's the left key so I'm just going to use the left right up and down arrows you could use WASD or anything else on your keyboard and if this is equal to the key code that has been triggered in our event so event.keyCode then I'll actually close the sidebar down so it's easier for you to see then what we're going to do is frog.move and for this, we'll just use the non vector 2f, like I said, somewhere down the line in this series. It's just in this video now, we was I was going to not use the vector 2f, it's just easier that way. It just saves time minus 80, so we're going to move it 80 pixels in the x axis, which moves it left, and zero in the y axis. So now let's copy and paste this. So the four instances, let's make the others else if because. You should only be able to move in one direction at any given time. And we'll change this to a right. Change this to a positive value so it moves right now. Change this to up. This should be zero now. And it is the Y value that should be 80. This should be 80. It should be zero. And finally, this should be down. So if we run this now, let's see what we get. So now let's see, we can move it, which is fantastic. We can also move it up and down as well, which is really cool. But also we can move it off screen. So I'm gonna leave that as an extra test for you because that's less object orienting and that is more functionality within Frogger. So I want you to check if when the user is, let's say trying to click right, are they on the screen? Uh, I mean, is the next position that they're trying to get to, is he on the screen? If so, fantastic. If not, prevent them from moving in that direction. So that's what I want you to do as an extra task. So now that we've got that, let's create a truck that moves from left to right. So we're gonna do SF rectangle shape, and I'm gonna call it truck. And it's gonna be truck.set size. And for this size, I'm gonna have a FF vector 2F. And this is gonna be 120 by 60. These are values that I've just worked out and I think look okay, but you can modify these accordingly. I'm gonna change the color of the truck just so it's easier to distinguish between the two. And for this, I'm gonna set it to FF color red. So. It's so we know this is bad and we should not be touching it. Truck dot set position and for the position value, 
what we're going to do is ff vector 2f and for the x value we're going to do truck dot get position where get position it's here somewhere oh it's right at the top dot get position x so we'll just leave it at the default position of zero we could put zero but I just like to do this so it just reassigns its own position if we did have a different position set to it. Now we're going to do window dot get size dot y divide this by two. So it's going to be half the width of our window. And now what we're going to do is minus truck dot get size. So we're going to just minus the truck size height. And now, before we make it actually move, we're just going to draw it. So window.draw truck, like so. So now let's run this and see what we get. Okay, Visual Studio seems to have... My Visual Studio seems to be sometimes just messing up like this. So if I quickly just shut or force quit this down, if I reopen it. Okay, so if I rerun it, and it will load, and we have our frog that can move. We can overlap at the moment. And now let's implement the collision. Or actually before we implement collision, I think it's best if we implement movement. So to move it where we've got update the game, we're gonna do truck.move. So this is gonna be happening every single frame. And we are going to move it 0 0.2 in the X axis and 0, 0.0 in the Y axis. So let's run this now. So as you can see, we have our truck moving. Because I'm not doing anything to do with frame rate, I'm not factoring it in. So this isn't frame rate independent gameplay. 0 0.2 may move faster or slower on your machine, depending on the number of frames per second your system is able to produce. So if you are able to produce more frames per second than my system is on average, then your thing will move faster at 0 0.2. And if it's less, it will move slower. If you want to check out frame rate independent gameplay, we got a separate series again on SFML, which covers all of that good stuff. But again, that's more gameplay related and not object oriented related. So now that we've got the truck moving, let's make it so it resets the position. Let, let me just run it one more time. So if we just wait for it to go off screen, what will happen is we want it to reset to the left hand side off the screen and then to come back on and constantly do that but for ours it doesn't do that because we don't we don't have the actual checks in place so we're going to do if truck dot get position dot x if that's greater than the window dot get size dot x so the position, remember it's relative to the origin, which the origin happens to be in the x-axis, happens to be on the left hand side of our shape. So if that point is greater than the width of the window, the shape is off screen. So now we need to reset it. So what we would do is truck.setPosition, you know what, to save time, we can just copy and paste this here for the y value that's not a problem but for this if let's put zero so it resets it to zero not the current position so it wouldn't actually do anything so let's run this see what we get and yeah it's still not loading like i was saying visual studio i mean xcode has been playing up recently where sometimes I have to just shut it down so bear with me if I have to keep doing this so let's rerun it and okay so let's see what happens when it goes fully off screen so it's 
It's going, it's going, it's going. You may have noticed it just, just appeared here. Remember, the positioning and the movement and moving and any transformation is relative to the origin. The origin is in the top left, so that's what gets repositioned. So the rest of it appears on screen when we set the position. So what we want to do is instead of doing zero, we want to put the negative truck dot size, so the width of the truck, and this will now position it off screen slightly. So let's run this again. So when this, I'm just moving the frog randomly, it doesn't really matter whether I move it or not. And as you can see, this comes back on the screen. So I'll just let it happen again. Okay, so that's all good now. And no, there is a problem. I was wondering why it didn't look right. It was due to, uh, do I need to really close Visual Studio? I mean, Xcode again. Again, really sorry about this. Xcode has been playing up. So if I run it, now, because I was actually using the Y value, and the height of the truck is a little smaller, so this should look a lot better. It, it actually looks like it's fully coming on. Now I was thinking it didn't look quite right. That's fine. So the last thing we're actually gonna do in this video is check for collision between the truck and the frog. So we're gonna do if, so to check for collision, very, very simple. You just do frog, or you can do the truck, doesn't really matter which one, dot get global bound. So this returns the rectangle around our frog shape or frog sprite or whatever we're using or text for example the global bounds is different to the local bounds because global bounds takes into consideration transformations that have been applied such as scaling positioning rotation that sort of stuff but local bounds does not it's the original rectangle i'm going to do dot intersects so if it intersects with a another rectangle and the other rectangle i'm going to check for is truck dot get global bounds if it does, then it's collided. And for now, we're just gonna do a simple window.close. So it just closes our application. Do I seriously have to shut it down again? At least this will be the last time in this video because this is the last thing to do. So if I shut it down, again, rerun it. I wonder if doing that helps. If I just alt open up terminal. So if I run this now. So now. Okay, that's fine. Because it wasn't actually colliding. It was technically below it. Obviously, I'm on the screen then. But let's see what happens when it touches it. Boom. The player is now dead obviously you'll probably display some sort of game over screen something really cool but again that's gameplay specific specific and not object oriented oriented related so we've got a simple frogger example in one single file over the next few videos we're gonna abstract this out into separate classes and other really cool files as well so stay tuned for them and i will see you next time